Yeah, we have Lilian and we have, yeah, three of them are here. OK, uh, hello, guys. I don't know, should I say good morning or no? But maybe in some countries it's about to be morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, everywhere. Uh, we are here on the third day of our mentorship or global uh, chivning mentorship, uh, which is uh, managed by some uh, current scholars voluntary in the UK. Uh, we are happy today to be with you and uh, I will give the rest of time for our three friends to to manage the activity for today. Uh, the, the, the style of activity is like that for the people who are participating on the first time. Uh, the first 40 minutes will be for three chiviners to mention their experience and some important tips. Uh, each of them will talk in 10, a minimum 10 minutes and maximum 15 minutes. Uh, so then you will be having 14 minutes to ask your questions regarding the tips and if you have uh, any specific or general question regarding the process of uh, interview or maybe application, maybe IELTS or English language requirement, uh, whatever comes to your mind, okay? Uh, you're welcome to raise your hands and ask your questions. Uh, be reminded that uh, we will not share the, this meeting for today. We will not share it on YouTube uh, for some reasons. And hopefully there will be three more mentorships uh, for Friday, next Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And hopefully we have enough uh, chiviners to, to run more activities, but we have to consider the situation. If uh, there's still interest, we, we can expand the project. Otherwise, we are satisfied with the six mentorship meetings, which uh, can be held by 18 uh, scholars. And I think this is fantastic. You are so lucky again. OK, remember this 2022 class, you are lucky. Uh, OK, let's start with our friends. Uh, Lilian, you can. I don't know who was the first person. I think it was Lilian. Lilian, go ahead. All right, hi guys. Um, very happy to meet you. Uh, very lovely morning, afternoon, evening. Um, Lillian, I'm from Tanzania, East Africa. Um, pursuing Masters of Science in International Business and Strategy, at Lancaster University. I am a Chevening Scholar and I'm going to share a few tips that really worked for me during my interview. Um, I had a really good experience during my interview, I'm not going to lie. And the first thing that really helped me um, is that I got prepared. I went through my essays, I practiced, like I really knew my essays, I knew everything that I wrote, I knew everything about me that I knew could pop up during the interview. Um, the first tip that I would like to mention is that you should be prepared for the unexpected. And what do I mean by this? Um, sometimes um, you can be very prepared and on the day of the interview, something might happen. Um, anxiety may catch up on you or um, your body or your hormones may start reacting. And the reason as to why I'm telling you this, it's because it really happened to me. I was really prepared and on the day of the interview, I woke up feeling very sick. <laughs> I wasn't sick um, the night before, but I woke up feeling very dizzy. I was vomiting, like I didn't see how I was going to do the interview and I had a morning session. Um, what really helped me is that I had a good support system. I had people that helped me to calm down. Um, and like I said, I woke up really early. so. I had time to internalize whatever that was happening to me. I had time to calm down. I had time. I didn't read or anything. I just sat there, you know, getting used to the because I did an yes, online. Right so I sat. Um, I sat. Um, 
Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. And no worries, we didn't understand because it was, I think, African, so everyone is safe. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah we're all safe. Yeah, like I said, um, what really happened was that my body reacted. I wasn't scared of the interview. I was really prepared, but for some reasons, my hormones or my brain, something really happened. And I think of that I really woke up early because I woke up like 6 a.m. And, you know, like that's when I figured some, uh, I figured that something is not right with me. So just get prepared. And I don't know about you guys, if you're going to have, uh, I don't know if you're going to have online or face to face, but if you're going to have face to face um, interviews, just try to, to arrive on time, you know, get used to the, if it's the embassy, get used to the place, you know, calm yourself because if you arrive late, so many things may happen. So just try to be on time and, you know, be prepared for the unexpected. And the second thing that I would like to share to, uh, with you is that listen to the questions carefully because uh, before you answer them, because what I realized is that you will have so much information. You're attending um, mentorship meetings, you read, you practice, you do mock um, interviews. So you have so much information um, with regards to the questions that might, uh, may pop up during the interview. So what happens is that your brain um, might trick you and you can answer a question that you have not been asked. For example, um, when I got there, the first question I was asked was, um, tell me about yourself and why shaving? So I had to take a break, you know, take a break. I didn't rush to answer. So I knew these are two different questions. So I answered, I told them about myself. And then after I finished, I told them why shaving. So you can have a um, one question that has a bundle of um, smaller um, pieces of um, questions. So be mindful of that. Make sure you listen, uh, you listen to the questions carefully before you answer, because you might answer um, a question that has not been asked just because you know everything about leadership. You can just give the wrong answer because you know so much. So be mindful if you have three questions or two questions in one, break them down and answer them um, um, calmly. And if you have not understood a question, those people are very polite. I'll like to assure you that they really want you to win. The fact that you've made it to this interview stage means a lot in the video. So um, again, just if you have not understood a question, seek for clarity before you proceed to answer. And my third tip will be, if you are asked any question about the UK, um, like, uh, why do you why do you want to come to the UK? Because that question might pop up. Um, I had a similar question before you enter to the interview while you're preparing yourself. Find something that um, resonates with the British people. Find something that the British people are proud of and mention during the interview because it will make you um, it will give you a competitive edge because this is a competition. So find something that will make you really shine. Something that, because um, I don't know about you guys, but in most interviews you have a chevening representative who is a British person, perhaps, or if you don't have a British person um, in the panel, um, your interview is recorded and I don't know who is going to review, but just find something that is going to, you know, link you and the UK. So if it's culture, if it's the food, for my case, I mentioned um, fries and fish and I had um, in my panel, there was a British person. He was very happy. You know, it really shifted the atmosphere of the interview because they started chatting, laughing, and it really gave me confidence and I nailed the next questions because he, he was like, ah, when you come to the UK, um, I'll make sure that I make fries and fish. So he really made me comfortable. So just that's what really worked for me. Um, find something that will connect you to um, the UK culture. Find something that, um, <laughs> yeah, for travel, mention Lake District, yeah, <laughs> dear. So just find something that the British people are um, really proud of, if it's sports or the culture or the food, anything, yeah. 
And <laughs> the other thing that I would really suggest that you do is that find that question that is going to make you shine. Because after the four questions, you'll be given a chance to ask a question. Find a question that will display your intellectual capability as a leader, as a person. Just find that one question that will give you age. Um, for my case, by then there was this um, COP26 thing that was um, going to happen in the UK. So I asked about it. They were really happy again. So um, it really warmed up the atmosphere because it was not an interview again. It was more, it was rather conversation. So find um, a question that will really make you stand out because you're going to be given a session, I mean, a chance to ask a question. However, don't ask an obvious question that will make you sound unprepared or <laughs> just don't ask an obvious question that is in the chevening page, you know, because you look unprepared. Find something that will really make you sound smart and um, something that will make you really prepared and um, look prepared. And mm, something else is um, be prepared. You might be asked an additional question apart from the four questions because the four questions are graded, but you can be asked um, um, an additional question or a follow up question that is not great, uh, being graded. For my case, I was asked about um, the economical situation in my country and it was a really um, broad question, so I answered and yeah, so be prepared. Apart from everything that you've written in your essays, you can be asked an additional question. Carry your passports <laughs> with you, maintain eye contact. Um, you don't want to, you know, don't be a robot, um, you know, don't just stare, just be natural, be human, but at the same time, be professional, maintain eye contact, don't rush to um, give answers, think and then give your answers and you'll just ace the interview. So yeah, <laughs> that's um, what I can share with you. And if you have any questions, you'll ask during the Q&A. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lilian. Uh, Tom, you can go ahead. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ndombizo Didi Mapapu. Um, I am from South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. Um, and I'd like to say congratulations for making it thus far. It's really a great feat. Uh, not everyone got to make it to the stage, but you have. Um, so congratulations and keep up the good work. Um, yeah, I'm studying, I'm reading a Master of Science in Climate Change and Development from the University of Reading. Uh, which is just about 20, 20 minutes away from England, uh, from London. Um, so it's easy to travel between London and, and Reading. Um, just my five tips, just to add on to what Lillian said. Uh, thanks, Lillian, for the tips. I think the first tip that I, I um, have for you guys is to go onto YouTube and watch YouTube um, videos from previous Shivening alumni. Um, that really helped me. I literally spent almost like a month going through the, 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 the videos, getting tips from them, listening to the mock interviews, um, you know, seeing how one, one should prepare and how they should conduct themselves in, in the interview. But at that point in time, they were doing face to face and my interview, like Lydian's, was um, virtual. So nothing, nothing different. Um, it's just that it's the difference is just face to face and virtual. But go onto YouTube. Type in shivening interview tips, type in um, shivening um, uh, mock interviews, and then you'll get what you need to do, get. Um, um, they'll tell you how to conduct yourself appropriately what and, and inappropriately. So you get to see both sides of the coin and learn from, from the tips. Secondly, don't come across as over-rehearsed. Yes, prepare, go over your responses, go over your uh, your plans that you have, but don't come across as rigid. And as Lillian said, don't become rigid. Um, but you know, show passion, um, sh show them your achievements, tell them about your achievements, align um, what you want to study with how, with your, your, wor your work, your previous work or academic work in your home country and what, and, and also the creation of bilateral relations between the UK and also your home country. So don't become re rigid, don't become over-rehearsed, be passionate. Be free, be confident um, in how you respond and how you interact with them. Thirdly, 
Um, as Linian said, think about difficult questions. Um, there are questions that you know will be asked, but there are those questions that you know um, you won't be expecting. Um, as Linian said, I agree. Calm down um, and just breathe and answer them. Uh, for instance, the question about tell yourself, it's, it's going to be asked, tell, yourself, tell us about yourself. Um, you might think that's an easy question. I'm going to tell them about my, my achievements and passions. But um, that question actually sets the tone for your interview. Um, it sets how they're going to interact with you. It actually tells them a lot about you as an individual and how you think and what your future plans are and how you use your qualification that you get, you get from the UK in changing your country and changing um, um, relationships relations or relations on your, your networks between the two countries. So um, if you get, you'll get that question, but it's actually asking, the panel actually wants to actually know what actually sets you apart. Tell us about yourself. What sets you apart from the other candidates that we've been interviewing in your home country? Um, what sets you apart? Why should you get this award? Why should you get the, this, uh, you know, this funding to study in the UK in a prestigious um, university? So you need to think carefully as well. Don't panic, just slow down, calm down, drink your glass of water and respond. Uh, fourthly, research, um, do your research. Um, um, it's very important um, how you um, respond. Um, so for instance, research is very important um, and um, you might think of how you want to use the qualification to make an impact, as I've already said. Um, you would need to provide practical solutions to them, um, link it with your previous experience and link it with what you want to do with the qualification using the networks that you have built in the UK and also the networks that you have in your home country. Um, um, the last, um, the last um, uh, tip that I have for you, um, yeah. So no, I've already mentioned that one, which is about how you respond to questions. So basically, that's it. Just calm down. Um, read through your read through your responses. Read through your um, the 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 statement that the personal statement you submitted, and just breathe. Just calm down. Um, like Lydian said, I also um, arrived early for my virtual interview. Thirty minutes before, sat down, switched my camera, tested it, tested everything. Just arrive early. Be prepared calm down, you've got this guys, you you can do this, you've come this far, you can do this, you've got this. Thanks, Tia. Thanks, Lydia and Yasis. Thank you, Miss. Uh, yeah, this this, you can start. Could you please unmute yourself? I thought I, sorry. Yeah. Hi everyone. I actually thought I unmuted myself and I have a sore throat so my like my voice is currently just out out of it. So I hope you can hear me. You can hear me, yeah, right? Yeah, you can hear you and Yeah, so I'm sorry yeah, you like for you. Oh, okay. take your time. No okay. worries. Yeah, I'm sorry if my voice keeps breaking, but I have like this sore throat and I'm like having a very just my voice is gone. Uh yeah. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Yeris Jess. I am from Ethiopia. I'm currently studying uh, at University of Sussex and studying childhood and youth studies. And I think most like points are covered by both of them. I just, what I have to say is just like from my experience, I practiced my answers before the, the interview. And then I practice in a sense of not memorizing it, but just knowing what to answer and just like having points and just like not by word by word, but just like having points and knowing if this thing is asked, then I will answer this. If this thing is asked, then I have this point to just elaborate and everything. And for me, my interview was done online. So at least there was that sense of not seeing them like you you'll only be seeing them in the computer so in the sense of that gave me a little bit of freedom to just do and talk however i wanted but honestly for me i had a very good time in my uh interview at one point it, it actually felt like i was having an informal conversation because they asked me what my experience was and they asked me what i plan to do and i was talking about back home i used to work with youth unemployment so I was talking about how I was going to work with youth unemployment and everything. And 
one of the person in the interview panel had an experience working within Africa on youth unemployment. So we had like a really nice informal conversation and we were able to click about it. So just what I would say is just be passionate about what you're going to talk about and know what you're going to talk about. And I, like I said, I practice with my sister. So if you don't find anybody, that's a, like, it, it doesn't matter if that person is experienced with the Chevening interview or not, but have somebody with you, like use your circus to just practice the interview. And as like, see the YouTube videos in order to know what questions are going to be asked so that to know how to, <clears throat> sorry, how to answer them and everything. And also uh, when you're answering any question that's asked, answer with your experience in the sense of when you wrote on the essay, you wrote about your experience, right? About leadership, networking and everything because they asked about a story and experience. So talk about that. And not only like about what you wrote on the essays, actually I would say just having a new experience and just elaborating on that area. That's what I did for my interview. I actually didn't use the experiences I had, like I wrote on my essay. I talked about a different experience related to leadership, networking and everything. And then I connected it to what I wrote on my essays. So have a new experience in mind as well. Just so just show that you're like a well rounded and a well networked and a very good leader person. And when you talk about your career plan, have a very clear goal in mind and how you want to impact your community as well, because the Chevening community wants to see how you can go back home and just like impact your community and how you can contribute to your society. So just have that career plan in mind. And honestly, all I can say is like, sell yourself as much as possible. Don't be humble, like be humble, but don't be humble. Like honestly, sell yourself, brag, brag about what you've done in a humble sense of like not bragging, bragging, but brag about how in a humble sense of how you've contributed to your community and everything. And as what they said about why you want to study within the UK, they've said it, just talk about the culture and just how you want to immerse yourself within that culture and just talk about how you want to see a different culture, how you want to experience music and talk about how you love traveling because with the UK has, is a, a white country. So you talk about how you want to see Ireland, Scotland, the different, the different cultures within the UK. So talk about traveling, talk about experiencing and everything. And also when they ask you about why you want to study and the chosen universities, actually, I would suggest doing your research with your universities as well. Know why you chose those universities. Talk about because of research. I want to learn more about research uh, and talk about how your experience back home just aligns with what the university is teaching and everything. So research your university. And as always, be prepared to get uh, to be asked a random question. At one point, they might ask you a random question. I don't remember what they asked me, but I remember being asked a question that I was literally not prepared for. And then I had to be like, OK, just give me a moment. Let me think about it and then replying to it. So there's that. And like all of them have said it, just breathe, be calm. And if it's going to be in person, be there earlier, because if you be if you get there late, then you're going to be nervous and then that's going to be hard for you. So be there earlier and then just be prepared and be yourself and literally sell yourself as much as you can. Thank you. I hope that made sense and I hope you could hear me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this, this it was lovely and it was helpful. We are really sorry to to hurt you, to to take your time and your sick. Uh, 
yeah, this was the, the, the first part of uh, our meeting. I just, my friends just remind me some, some points. Uh, I think that the, the interview uh, dates, next two days it will start for some of you. Uh, I really recommend you that uh, the, the night before the, the, the interview, if you have family, uh, go out, uh, take your time, enjoy, enjoy your night nicely, uh, sleep well, and uh, I don't know if you have wife or girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, have a date, go to, go to a restaurant, fresh your mind, okay? Forget tuning, forget scholarship, forget UK, forget everything. Just uh, try to, to, to make your day, okay? Uh, end it in a good mood, in a positive mood. Uh, it will really help you that at the, the beginning of the day, you're going to do uh, an important task, which is to interview, uh, be confident. And, you know, they're not, they not looking for perfect people. I don't know, we Chiviners are somehow crazy. Some of us are telling, be humble. No, don't be humble. Be perfect. No, don't be perfect. They are not looking for perfect people. They are looking for perfect candidates. OK, so be a perfect candidate, not a perfect person. OK, we have many people. Believe me, I know some people, they have uh, their academic research in Harvard, in Cambridge, and they are very ha ha high rank. OK, they are better than me and maybe most of us. But they can't get chivening. Chivening is not about very perfect people. It's about very perfect candidate regarding their criteria. Okay, so we are talking about their criteria. We are telling you do this, do this, and don't do this, don't do this. So uh, bear in your mind to be a perfect candidate, not a perfect person. Uh, regarding the, the why UK, most of you and some of friends are usually asking us what should I answer regarding why UK. Uh, my friends all mentioned some important points. Uh, be simple. Talk about sport, travels, tea. Talk about milk. I don't know. Uh, Scotland. Even for now, currently I'm there. I'm thinking to go to the, the locations of uh, film, film, filming. For instance, I am interested in Peaky Blinders and I want to check their locations, real locations. Game of Thrones, real locations. OK, so you may mention these things. You may mention that you want to see Ronaldo in, in the stadium. Why not? So yeah, uh, link this, link these funny points with your academic uh, interests, academic interests. You want to study because your university is the highest or the, your course is the highest. And besides, there are some personal interests because now, I, I think that they, they really focus on extrovert people. They want to accept extrovert people, the people who, who interact, who make networking, because these people can get benefit from the scholarship and can give, okay, can, can do voluntary activities, can be part of the communities and interact with different peoples. So yeah, you like that. Okay. Uh, for now, you can raise your hand. Uh, we have plenty of time. Uh, my three friends will crush your, your questions by lovely answers. Sorry, dear. Yeah, yeah. Just Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. You just reminded me when you said uh, everything is not perfect. Actually, at one point during my interview, like I literally forgot what I was talking about in the sense. Like I couldn't remember everything in English and then I was remembering everything in my language. And I was like, um, I'm sorry, just give me a moment. I lost. I'm like, I'm lost in English. And I was like, literally stopped my conversation for two minutes. And I was like, I'm sorry, just give me a moment. And then calmed myself down and then continued my conversation. So if that happens, because most of us are not like our life, our first language is not English. So just be prepared to have that as well. So if that happens, just tell them like, just give me a moment, take a breeze and just continue your conversation. That's just what I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Lilian, go ahead. Um, to add on that, um, 
I had um, during the pre-departure uh, meeting, we had a pre-departure meeting for all Chevnas from my country before we came here. So one of the panel members is the Chevning officer for my country. So he was like telling us um, what really happened during the interviews and he, he was giving his two cents. And it was like most of the people who didn't um, get this scholarship, some of them it's because of faking the accent. <laughs> You're not English, just communicate. This is not an English exam or an English competition. Communicate with clarity. Don't fake an accent, you know, speaking the British <laughs> accent or something. Just be you so long as you're communicating. Because even um, if you look at the criteria for the achieving scholarship, there's nowhere um, where it's mentioned we're looking for English proficiency. They just want you to be able to communicate. So don't fake an accent because I think that's uh, a ticket to your failure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the, the duty of university to check your 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 uh, language proficiency. OK, if you get that uh, unconditional offer, so you're safe. It's not that a uh, chivening concern in these years, at least. Perfect. Uh, okay, uh, raise your hand for questions. Uh, we are going to start with Noor. Noor, go ahead. And please direct your questions specifically for one of our three uh, chiveners. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Noor and I'm from Syria. Uh, I have two questions. They are really general, so I'm not sure who uh, any one of you can answer me about. Uh, one of you mentioned that we need to have the passport with us. Uh, so my question is that my passport is expired at the moment and I'm trying to get the new one, but I'm not sure it will be ready by the interview date. So will be that a problem? My next question is uh, that uh, as Chivning is supporting the FCDO objectives in uh, my country, uh, my question is that I am working in an organization that is funded by uh, partly uh, by FCDO. So, uh, but the, 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 my plan uh, for studying in UK is to get a more specialized education to be involved more in the programs that I am currently working in. So would that be a good question? or and or like it's better not to mention it any is it good to mention it by myself or wait if they will mention it in any way thank, thank you. you thank you no liliane you wanna oh yeah yeah um regarding the passport um it depends um i don't know if you have um for us we had a virtual interview so i think they had to ensure that it's um, practically you who is there, so I don't know about you. Um, the, I think they'll probably instruct you or something um, if they send you an email or something. But then they just need some form of ID um, because even yes. if you're going to an embassy, you'll need some form of an ID. Even if it's an expired passport, you can go with it. With regards to your second uh, second question, I'll answer it and maybe somebody else can add more to it. Um, if you have a question you you if you have a question and you really need clarity for anything if they don't ask you during the um during the interview um session you can ask when you're given a chance to you know you'll be given room um for you know asking questions so if you need clarity for anything feel free to answer because i remember um when I was um, interviewing, I wasn't so sure if I would be able to come to the UK because my country by then was in the red list. So they didn't mention anything about it, but then I had to ask. So I asked and then they told me that they'll make sure that I come to the UK. So if you have anything and they have not asked you and you really want to um, get clarity with regards to that, just answer, I mean, ask during the um, Q&A session that you'll be given, yeah. Thank you, Lilian. Uh, as an addition for first question, it's quite normal if you have any other uh, documents that attach to your name and your picture and your name. It's quite normal and it's quite normal if your passport is expired. Uh, if you have it, you can go with it. 
quite normal and you're safe. Um, yeah, regarding the second question, I think because you are shortlisted, it means you are eligible regarding the regulations. So you are safe to, to mention anything regarding UK. And I think, it, in my opinion, I think it will make your your application more uh, stronger and more related to the, their, their goals. So you have to find a way to, to link it with your study. Thank you, Noor. Uh, Lamin Dibaba, I think. I'm really sorry if I mispronounced names. Some of them are really difficult for us, you know, because we are in a world class. So apologize for. Sorry, dear. Sorry, yeah, dear. I'm not sure if you can see. Sorry, dear. I'm not sure if you can see us because I've had my hand up for a while. Uh, oh. But just to add on to what you just said about the second question uh, that um, uh, that Noah asked, um, I think it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a good platform to you just link what the work that you've been doing, the work of with the work of the SC, FCDO. Um, it's going to also show how you'll be able to network and also be link, be able to link the work of your home country and that of the UK. So use that opportunity. Just see how you frame the question um, and use it, bring it up so that they can see the net the network or the connection between the work that you've done and you're going to do after you've attained your qualification. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Miss. Uh, you three uh, chairs, please feel free to unmute yourself whenever is necessary because we are focusing on the members. Okay, because uh, yeah, uh, Lamin, Lamin Dibaba, go ahead and direct your question, please. Uh, thank you very much, dear, for the initiative, and also thank you so very much for the current evening scholars uh, that have guided us through so many beneficial tips and as well as advices. Uh, I have basically one question for now, and I hereby direct the question to Ntom B. Mapapo, the chief nurse studying at the University of Reading. Uh, I am also an aspiring chief nurse from the Gambia, and the University of Reading is my first choice, and I have already secured an unconditional offer for the MSc Agriculture and Development at the University of Reading. So basically, I wanted you to uh, tell me some of the some of the events that are organized by Chivnin at the University of Reading, ranging from the volunteering aspect of it or some of the conferences that are done, if any. Basically, what are some of the events organized by Chivnin or some of the events that Chivnas take part in at the University of Reading? Thank you very much. Nice question. Go ahead. Um, thank you for the question. Well, this current cohort hasn't really been organizing um, any events um, um, at the university, but they're very they're, they're, the 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 school itself, which is the school of of, of agriculture uh, policy and development, has a lot of activities that you can participate in. Um, there are a lot of seminars that you can also participate in. Um, as well as there are a lot of programs around the university which you can uh, uh, participate in. Um, I'm participating in a RED Award, which is basically a training development and a, a voluntary uh, program organized by the university. Um, so um, upon my graduation, I'll receive my certificate, which is very good because it's also, um, it also helps with employment. Um, because it demonstrates that you've um, had your fair share of voluntary work. Um, it's on an individual basis. Um, everyone is encouraged to participate in it, but do you choose whether or not you participate in it? So the school has various programs. We have weekly seminars um, outside our, our normal programs. Um, and there are lots of activities that you can participate in as an individual as well. Um, so, so you when you get here, you find you find um, a lot of interesting opportunities. It's really up to a person if they want to focus strictly on the academic aspect or if they want to participate in other aspects of the university and there are lots. So um, I like participating. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't play sport this year. Um, so I've decided to do voluntary work. Um, uh, so apart from academic stuff, I do voluntary work here and there. So yeah, thanks for the question. Thank you. Roa, uh, yeah, you can start. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Uh, 
uh, thank you very much for having this webinar and my interview is up next week. Uh, and I was I wanted to ask two questions. It's general, so any of you uh, is welcome to answer. Uh, the first thing is uh, somebody told me that we can bring pictures about some activities we have uh, done or from our job in the field and like uh, show it to the interview panel. And the second question is um, when we are speaking and trying to align the job that we're doing in our country with the job that the embassy or uh, I don't know, the Commonwealth Office do, uh, somebody told me that this is too much information, uh, that uh, it's better that we show that we are um, willing to collaborate without like uh, giving them, them this and try to give like statistics and numbers because this would like, um, this would like give them like an impression that uh, you already knew everything and you are already uh, like uh, designing the answers and like uh, forming your answers according to the things that you expect them to expect them to like, you know? So yeah, these are my two questions. What's your major role? Uh... My what? What's your major? What are you trying to study? What's your course? Um, I'm a medical doctor. I'm studying. I'm trying to study health policy in uh, public health. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is. You want to add or answer questions? Do you have any idea about the health questions? No worries, you will we'll try to not come to you again. OK, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Le le uh, I'm so sorry, can somebody else take it? Take this. Take this. I'm sorry. <clears throat> OK. Uh, OK. <laughs> OK, um... OK, OK, sorry. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. okay. okay, if it were me, it's a battle. I would go all in. If there's anything that is going to make me stand out, I would go in because they're expecting you to. You, you have, they expect you to wow them. If you have anything that is going to make you stand out, because um, let me tell you something. You'll be surprised after um, you you're selected for um, the um, scholarship. Everyone is exceptional. <laughs> I, I I met like um, 15 chefs from my country. They were all exceptional. And I was like, I thank God I didn't meet them before the interview because I would have been inter uh, intimidated. Everyone is exceptional. So if you have your own bullets, fire them. Fire them because everyone is going to fire their own bullets. If you have something that is going to make you stand out, stand out. If you have something, they expect you to come prepared. Don't let somebody tell you that, oh, you will appear um, like um, Toby said, don't um, appear, um, don't come with an attitude, you know, but brag respectively. Um, just show who you are, show um, um, exceptional things about you. Brag, brag, brag. Yes. Yeah. Regarding your first question to I don't know, taking pictures, bringing pictures with you to the interview. I think most most or maybe all of the, the, the applicants will not uh, bring things with themselves. Even the previous year, I remember some people ask these questions. I think you have to convince them by your examples, by your influence, by, by showing them what networking you have, what, 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 what plan you have. Uh, you guys all, OK? Bear in mind that these panels are not experts. OK, they're not experts. Maybe three of them, maybe none of them know anything about medicine or I don't know, engineering or maybe they have some general information regarding uh, the engineering or medicine or any field, but they're not experts. So they're not expecting you to, to tell them I have to do this and use this and do this like that. No. They are just looking at your 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 abilities, your 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 skills, the, the examples that you have mentioned, and what what have you done after after that, that submission? What are you currently doing, and what's your plan for future? So, 
if it's me, I will not take. I'm not uh, being pictures to the, the the interview room because it's interview. It's it's discussion. You have to convince them by your your speech, by your yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have someone, but I really can't read his her name. G K D U D five two nine. Go ahead. And your name, oh. please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, this is my idea. Um, my okay. name is Hyang Jan, and I'm originally coming from South Korea. And sorry, my voice is quite low because it's almost getting poor. I am here. Um, I have two questions related to my career plan, and um, yeah. So my field is public health, but I don't have any academic background for public health. But I have one master already for development policy, and for my working experiences, uh, I have more than four years for four years of working experiences in Zambia, and Malawi, and Kenya, and I don't I don't have any working experience here, here in my home country, South Korea. So I know that Shavning want to like the bilateral relationship between the UK and the host country. And since my home country is in South Korea, uh, how do you recommend me to answer between like the career plan when I'm coming back to my home country? Because I don't have any working experiences in, here in South Korea. So uh, what, so what have you mentioned like, in your essays? What have you mentioned in your essays as short term plan and long term plan? Um, in short term plan, uh, I would go back to working in the United Nations because I was working in the UN before. And uh, in the long term, I think I wrote about uh, to come back to Korea and working as uh, one of the research center in Korea has Korea has and social affairs somewhere under the Ministry of Health. That's what I have been writing. But uh, how can I answer about that one? OK, thank you, it's clear, I think. Mapapu, yeah. uh, you want to say something regarding the question? Uh, sorry, I wasn't listening to the question because I was responding to questions in the in the in the the chat. So perhaps Lillian uh, or here is this okay. can respond because okay. there are a lot of questions also in the chat, so no one's replying to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are just focusing on that. OK, uh, I think you have to stick to the, the, the essay plan, OK, because they are they are agreed on your essay plan, the short term and long term. Uh, you don't have to say something that is un unreal or you can't do it or you have to do you have to make some sacrifices to, to, to do it, maybe leave your job or something like that. No, be the one that you have mentioned in your essays and just show them what impact you're going to make for, 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 for the plan. OK, I think. While you are, you have mentioned that you want to do some activities in UN and I don't know this, this stuff, I think uh, it will be OK to 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 mention and show what what difference you're going to make in, in this field or in this organization. OK, because Chivening is global. Chivening in, in one circle is working for for ev everywhere for 160 countries. It's not only about your country, so I think it's quite normal as it's my personal uh, opinion. I think it's quite normal if you have uh, global goals in short term and long term it's possible why not yeah sorry can i just <clears throat> can i just add to that uh, okay. i i i had the same experience in the sense like i was working back home and everything but my short term and long term plan were different in a sense so my short term plan was to go back home and work within a project as a project manager that worked within like a user child related thing. And my long term was just like having my own NGO and just not only working within Ethiopia, but working within the African continent and then just spreading outside the global community. So 
uh, the good thing is that we have already passed into the, to the, to the interview stage. So that means that they actually like agree with what you wrote or, and they see there's a potential in what you wrote and what you're going to do. So just talk about how not only are you going to impact within like your country, but also the global community as well, because Chevening doesn't like it's not only focused in your country, but has like wants to make an, a global impact as well. So just I would say stick to what you wrote and also talk about the global community in that sense as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, let me check who's next. We have uh, Ibars. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one of them is uh, yesterday one panelist said that some universities don't find a IAT score to study because if your bachelor's degree, for instance, is in English, you don't have to get a IAT score. I think he said that. Is it possible? Uh, it's my first question. And the second one is, uh, how can we answer the what's your favorite leader and uh, tell about his leadership qualities? Thank you very much. Thank you. Regarding the um, first question, can I answer that one? Yeah, go ahead. Um, regarding the IELTS test, um, it depends. It depends on your university. Um, there are universities which can waive the IELTS test. If you ask them to waive it, they can. But there are there are instances where it's not. It, you can't waive it. For instance, in my instance, I had to write the IELTS test. Um, but I found out that from my other colleagues, they had a letter written from their previous institution um, to indicate that they were uh, proficient in, 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 in English. So it's up to your university if they'll be able, if they want to waive it. Um, it also depends on where you got your previous qualification. If you've got it from a, an institution that is, is, is rated amongst the best in the, in the world, then most likely you'll be able to waive it um but it depends on the university basically if they are if they want to they'll waive it if they if they don't want to they won't waive it and then you have to go write the out test on what she said just follow the requirements like if you go to the university you choose they would have their requirements within their website so just if you read there it would literally point you out as how if you need the ilts or not so you can find it within the website you chose, like the university you chose. Exactly. You have to check your country in the, 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 the portal and some of them provide it, but it's mostly for the, the countries that already the, the English is second language in the countries or it's the main language for some countries. Yeah, you have to check that. that universities and I think we forgot the, the second question I, I can't remember what was this uh, uh, favorite leader and, uh, and the favorite. leadership qualities yeah. yes but I want to talk about that one because uh, I mentioned in my essay they didn't ask me but I mentioned in my essay uh, for fav favorite leader I think it's a good idea if the leader is in your country if you haven't mentioned in your essay if you mentioned in your essay, you have to stick that one that you've mentioned in your essay. But if you haven't, uh, I think it's a good idea to mention someone in your country who everyone respect him or her and see him or uh, see the person as a model uh, in your country. And also, it's it's good if you have networking with that person and how that person uh, made influence you and how that person made you to do something new or something good in, in your community, in your society. Yeah, some people mention that I'm interested in Barack Obama. Then what? Or Nelson Mandela, if, with full respect. Maybe the people of their country can mention, but then what? You have to mention someone local, someone who, who still can make impact on you, can be mentor on you, can be uh, supportive for you, okay? I mentioned one of the professors of my university. Uh, uh, we are lucky that still we, we have him. Uh, his influence for voluntary job is still working on me, is influencing me. 
we are here. Maybe the idea was mine at the beginning of the process. We are we are here because of him, okay? And these all friends, our chiviners, they have the same models in their countries. Uh, some people push them to do a voluntary job. And this is influence. This is a good example we, we, we mentioned at this moment. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, okay, friend, go ahead. I can't read your name. Uh, K, K. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. And could you please uh, share your name with so, us? Actually? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, can you see me? Yes, you okay. can hear. Uh, okay, so I just want to ask the two questions. So uh, the first question is the the university related with the university. So I did not, uh, so I did not apply the any university it yet uh, before I uh, had been invited the interview from from. That from the evening. So recently I applied the uh, corpus of the universities, uh, but I didn't receive any university it yet. So so the, my interview is the very soon uh, in the 15th uh, March. So I uh, so in this time I did not receive any university offer. So that will be affect uh, my interview process. That is the first question. And the second part on the question is that uh, so I now I'm studying uh, uh, a lot of the interview questions from the YouTube as well as the other the former uh, and the and the, the candidate uh, the evening, uh, the scholarship and the scholarship persons from the evening scholar. So I found that. So the, the the question is the what is your ultimate goal? How can I answer that kind of the questions? That will be general or probably the specific. So yeah, I just want to know that. Thank you very much. Yeah, my question will be there. Yeah, post. Uh, okay. Uh, regarding the, the, the it was me, right? She directed to me. Yeah. The, the, the first yeah. question regarding the universities, it quite, it's quite normal to, uh, it's not good. It's not recommended. Uh, uh, I wish you could start soon, sooner than now, but you're safe. It, yeah. it doesn't uh, affect you, your, your interview at all. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, they may ask you that, have you applied for universities? It's good to say yes. So if you haven't applied, you can apply. I, I think applying universities doesn't take a lot of time. I, I I remember I applied for two, three universities in two, three hours. Only the first, second university, maybe the first two universities are somehow difficult because you are not familiar with the, the portals. And yeah, and I think you don't have to apply for more than three universities because you, you have already you haven't already tried to apply for your own universities, so don't try any other universities, only try these three universities. But bear in mind, check the, 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 the eligibility uh, requirements of universities, check the, the BA mark, BA degree, and compare it with you, your BA. Check the English requirements, okay? Check if they, they uh, yeah. require experience, check everything. If you think that uh, you're fine, then you will be fine. UK universities are not uh, restrict, are not tough for for giving uh, offers. If you have uh, if you have conditions, uh, then they will accept you. Why why should they refuse you? They they have no no points to to, to refuse you. And as you know, in in the UK, the, the higher education is private. It's uh, beside of academic achievements and academic quality. It's also business. So they want to accept uh, the more people apply they, they want to accept it it's quite normal and uh, mention in your email with the admissions that you are shortlisted uh, for, for achieving uh -huh. uh, they will uh -huh. consider your application and they will uh, make it uh, faster oh, okay. your, your, your second question i really forgot <laughs> i'm not okay today. okay so i will 
So yeah, when I studied the 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 shifting the interview questions, so I found that so the what is your ultimate goal? So how can I answer that kind of the question? That will be probably the general, or uh, like the most specific. I think you have to go with specific for goals and both uh, short short term plan and long term plan. I really recommend. Uh, Smart, uh, smarty. I really uh, recommend smart approach. Okay, your goal okay. or your short term or your long term should be specific, uh, measurable, actionable, uh, reliable, and uh, timing. You have to mention these uh, points. Check smart approach uh, on Google. You're gonna find many different articles regarding this approach yeah. and they already in I think in their website they, they have already mentioned to 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 focus on smart approach so when you focus on smart approach whatever you say whatever your goal uh, it will be clear that is it good or not is it acceptable or not can you achieve it or not even for your daily life friends you can use smart approach to check your goals to check that are they possible or not? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we go with uh, Lourdes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, well, my name is Lourdes. I'm from Honduras and I have two questions, I think. Well, three, Di I think. Di uh, direct your questions, please. Okay, which are the most, I have the, my first question, is, um, if you know which are the most common questions that they ask on the interview, if there are any tricky questions that we should prepare for, and if there is any dress code, if you have to wear formal clothes or, you know, just sneakers and a t-shirt, and well, that's are my three questions. Lilian? Um, okay, for the dress code, no, you have to be very professional. You're a leader, dress like a leader, act like a leader, so no sneakers and jeans and um, yeah. And the first question, sorry. Um, like which are the most common questions that they ask in the interview or if there are some tricky questions that Every they question. would like to ask? OK, sorry. Um, I think um, the most question will be tell me about yourself because they want to hear about you and set the tone of the interview. Expect questions around the four interview questions. I mean, the four um, essay questions, leadership, because I can tell you they'll ask you, tell us about your favorite leader or what's your leadership style, but though the questions will be around the four questions. So um i can say um which one is going to be the most common because the questions that are being graded are um, around the essays the trickiest question every question is tricky if you don't listen carefully and if you have not um, prepared yourself so if you if you have prepared yourself and if you come i don't think any question is going to be tricky apart from the question that um, pops from nowhere. I mean, the last question that is not related to the essays, which you can take your time in answer. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Rusa. Uh, guys, please direct your questions for Achievener. It will easify the, the, the process and make it faster. Rusa, Obed, go ahead. Rusa. OK, we have. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Rusa. Oh, sorry, my battery was low. No so I have two questions. The, the first one was, uh, what do you think the most challenging thing regarding your field in your country? Do they mean the cost or they mean because? OK, let me let me first start with this. I mean, health, I mean, health science. So now that do, do they refer to the field as on health or do they refer to the field as a course? And then to the, the, the other question is on now the, uh, on the dressing code. 
they said you must work as a leader or be profession. Can one go like, let me say, if you are a doctor, can one go like, can, can one be in a court to like be like presenting in your profession or they just need you to be in a casual dressing code? Thank you. Okay, I, I, will, I will answer the second one and the first one for maybe Mapapu or yeah, this days or Lilian. Uh, well, leaders are crazy. Okay, you may go, you may go to the hall with uh, a white coat. Why not? Uh, I remember because I'm Kurdish and we Kurdish really care about our costume, our Kurdish uh, clothes. Uh, I remember uh, the other uh, the, 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 it was 9th of uh, March. It was the Kurdish uh, cloth day. So uh, all even the, the British uh, panel, uh, he wore our Kurdish costume. So uh, I, I don't know that that the, the, the chivinner for that day, uh, did they wear the, the Kurdish clothes or not? But they really like cultural things and they really they are really interested in these things. Uh, it's just an idea. You may just go with your coat. You, you're going to share your story with you, your your formal dress. It's just an idea. Why not? But I think Lilian means uh, that the formal, uh, the casual. And we when we wear it for professional work in, I don't know, in maybe offices and this stuff. So but you can go with your, your coat and we are proud of it. We, we, we love it. And when we see someone with white coat, we, we think that we are safe. Why not? Um, sorry, what was the second question? I'm, I'm busy with the chat. <laughs> May I please have the second question again? I, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Let me just repeat my second question. The second question was, uh, the, what do you think uh, is the most challenging thing regarding your field in your country? So now, my I, I think I'm not getting that question well. Do they mean the field as in health field? So what are the challenging uh, issues in health or what are the challenging issues in uh, in the in the courses, let me say you, you choose uh, epidemiology. So do they mean the uh, epidemiology side, or do they mean health in in general? Are hmm. you getting me? I, I think I'm trying to get you, but I have, I'll be corrected if I'm not. I think perhaps um, in, in, with regards to that question, it, it would be related to what you plan to study. So why, in, in terms of why have you chosen the field? What is the challenge that you want to address in that field as you want to pursue a qualification in the United Kingdom? Uh, for instance, I'm, I chose climate change and development, and I, 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 I indicated that the, the main reason why I chose it was because um, my issue is that the issue of climate change affects everyone, but at the moment, the people on the ground, you know, your, 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 the people... In, on the ground, your normal people aren't really um, involved in policy decisions and addressing, if you're talking about climate justice and climate action, it's all about you know finding money to finance clim climate change, but um, people on the ground aren't really consulted on the issue of climate change and it affects them because they grow the food on the farms, they, you know, they work on the land. Um, so yeah, so I think it would be related to your field and the qualification that you want to study. Yes. Thank you, guys. Uh, Albina, go ahead. Uh, guys, I think it's a good idea. The first day we mentioned that, but I forgot to mention today. Uh, however, Mopopo tried to answer some questions in the chat, but we really want to you focus here in, in uh, the, the, the speaking part because I think it can provide more clarification for questions. Uh, Albina, go ahead and direct your question to someone, please. Okay, um, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Albina and I come from Kosovo. Um, I have applied uh, in Royal Agriculture University and uh, in Newcastle. I have finished plant production. Um, so I wanted, I, I don't know, it's, it's in general this question because I wanted to ask, for example, if I don't get uh, 
if I don't get accepted in those two universities, I'm more focused on a sustainable agriculture and uh, food security. But I have also applied at the University of Reading and the University of East Ang Anglia because they have like the same courses. And for example, if I get accepted at uh, University of East Anglia, but if I have an unconditional offer, but I don't get accepted to my course of choices that I have in the application, um, what should I do? I mean, because this is what I don't know. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, this is. Can I answer to that? Oh my God. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, actually, I faced the same thing uh, as you. So I applied to three universities, and the first two were like my very choice because I was working with youth unemployment, and the first choice was uh, youth and uh, community development and the second one was you then international development so I was really excited for those universities but by the time I passed the interview and they gave me the offer for the scholarship both of my first choices had denied me acceptance so I only got acceptance to my third choice which was childhood and youth studies so for me it was like it was kind of sad not to go to those two universities, but it was still a very good thing because I still got a scholarship and I still got an acceptance. So, and I, like, even though it was my third choice, it was something I was interested at. In. And currently being here and studying both things related to youth and <clears throat> childhood is giving me a very wide perspective of seeing things. So. That's what I would say. Exactly. Can I just say uh, something else? Sorry, uh, but I mean, for example, what if I don't accept it in none of my three choices, but uh, I get accepted to have you, have you received any offers in these three universities? Uh, they are. Uh, I have applied because I have chosen my first and second choices: uh, Royal Agriculture and uh, Newcastle. And my third choice is again Newcastle University. But uh, the course is different from the first choice. Uh, but I, I have applied. I, I got your question. I think it's a good idea to 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 make your courses closer. Okay. It will yeah. help you to, to focus on your goal. If you have chosen rural and then development, and I don't know, I'm not expert in these courses, you know better than me, but I think it's a good idea. It's a perfect idea to apply to uh, three universities with the same course, with the same title or close title. It's not a wise idea to apply in three different courses in the same university. OK, so you have chance to switch one of uh, universities that you think is somehow not close to the area, not close to the, the, the goal to your short term and long term, exchanged with a university that you have a conditional offer. So you will uh, you in this regard, you're going to do two po positive things. First, you have a c conditional offer or unconditional offer from a university and you will uh, make your, your, your CV, your, your polls are more narrow, okay? So I think this may help you. So I can still change them in my application because I try to, and they are all the same. They are all uh, sustainable agriculture and food security. Just mm -hmm. the other one is uh, sustainable agriculture and environment. Change that one. And uh, don't care about the, the what do you call it the order the order of universities just yeah. switch it switch it and tell them uh, you found out that uh, the new university is better and their modules are better they are more related to your plan and your your experience and so on covered with this uh, nice words and when you get the scholarship you're safe no worries the first the second the third which one you like which one you desire which one you have unconditional offer you just email the program officer, you tell him I want second choice, third choice or first choice, and they will send you final letter and then you're going to apply for visa and we will welcome you here. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mean to go ahead. Everybody and can you hear me? Yes. Hey. 
Yes, thank for letting me ask some question. I have some three some question for my application. Yes, uh, my question would be very general, but kindly answer. Uh, one, we are asked, uh, what is your leadership or what is your networking skill? At the time, um, shall I answer based on my essay, what I wrote, or um, shall I answer the new extra Expedia? Uh, because if I have to answer um, similar facts included in my essay at the time, it is kind of repeating or something like that. So I would like to know this is. Or shall I continue the second question? Yes, but please, guys, please. I know your questions are all general, but please direct someone. We will not answer general questions no more. OK. <laughs> OK, the, the, the first question f for Dia, second question. <laughs> OK, so second question is uh, related to my career plan or networking. So and in essay I wrote, uh, I will find some UK companies or UK organization to help my country. So uh, actually, in reality, I really love to find the connection of the UK companies or organization um, to support my country. So is there any chance or opportunity in, in the UK to meet such kind of event or such kind of professional job fair like that. I would have to find the networks of connection when I return back to the to Myanmar. So uh, uh, I would have to know from you because you are really experienced and currently in the UK, then uh, you may have the um, great uh, experience. Um, I would have to say in my interview based on the real, real reality experience so that I would have to say. The second question, uh, for the last, uh, I would say uh, I'm not sure about that, but I would like to know at the end of our interview, uh, is there any uh, counter question from the interviewer like, uh, do you have any question to me to ask like that? At the time, uh, what would be the best question to shoot back to the interviewers? Okay, thank you. First question me, second uh, Papu, and third one, maybe Lilian or Yadistas. Uh, the, the first question, the question was, uh, should we mention networking and leadership examples of our essays or should we mention fresh examples? Uh, I and I think I've discussed this with some scholars. We really recommend to mention new examples that you didn't have chance to mention in your, in your essays regarding the limitation of the words. OK, and also uh, me, myself, what I did, I mentioned uh, one of the leadership examples very briefly, very shortly, and then I linked with a new example that I haven't mentioned in the, the essay, and I then linked with a current example. So I mentioned three examples for leadership in five, I think it was maximum five minutes. And I think five minutes is a lot for one example. They will get bored, okay? Why should they listen to you for five minutes for one example? Because you have to be, uh, the, the style is like that. Some, some people apply star uh, approach. Let me write down star. Star approach, which is uh, situation, task, uh, action, result. And some people uh, apply star uh, approach, which is uh, situation, task, action, result. Uh, learning what you have learned from the, 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 the example. And I really recommend car action. Star action and star action, these first uh, approaches are good for writing, for writing genre, because uh, writing can't give you a lot of information in a, a short time. You have to clarify, you have to make examples expanded to, to to give them chance to understand you but for speaking it's easier speaking genre is easier when you expand the the process it will be somehow boring so i really recommend car uh, approach which is challenge action result only three steps what was the challenge and what was your action and what was the result if it's passed uh, so 
I really recommend this uh, approach. And for your main question, uh, please, uh, if you want to mention, if you really love your your essay examples, you can mention uh, them, but very briefly, and link them with some current or a current example which is unique and fresh and can make them understand that you're unique, you are the other perfect candidates. Yeah, uh, Mapapo, I think the question was regarding the uh, linking between your country and UK. Yes. Um, I think from what I could understand from the question, um, you'll correct me. You're saying that you wanted you you wanted to link up with companies in the UK that can help you with your uh, with your career goals in in um, is it South Korea? Is that the um, correct Myanmar. question? Myanmar. Is it, yeah, Myanmar. Myanmar. So is that yes. the question? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. 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 That's also part of the networking, which you can gladly mention in your in your in your interview. Um, mention that you want to build relations um, with um, countries or with a particular company or a company that's related or companies related to the field or your qualification um, that are also represented in Myanmar, um, which is which will be very good. And and it's 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 I think frankly it's easy. You can you can just go through your new, you can go contact your university and see how you can establish relations. With that particular country, I mean, with that particular company, um, for instance, here at the University of Reading, um, we have a lot of sessions with um, ex uh, external companies. Uh, we have seminars. Um, the School of Agriculture has seminars with external companies, and you you can decide whether or not you want to have a network with that company um, and see how that um, that ha um, and that that relationship develops. We also have a program called Thrive, which is a mentorship program. Um, which you can also participate in. Um, you just go, they, while well, they select you to be part of it, and they link you with people across the globe, um, whether in the UK or across the globe that are in your field. Um, and you can use that also as a networking opportunity. So there are a lot of opportunities. You just need to go find them, and sometimes they find you. Exactly. Okay, okay thank you. Lillian regarding the asking questions. I think Lillian mentioned that if we just repeat it very shortly, be okay with it. If you have, even it's okay to, to not have questions. I think it's better to not ask question, a question that is very repeated than mm. having a question of repeated, okay? So if you have a specific or, uh, I don't know, uh, a new question you you mind, you want to find the answer, uh, maybe regarding their culture, regarding the academy, regarding, I don't know, whatever, you can ask. But I think it's if it's a repeated question, don't ask it because they already know that, that I've already got these questions from previous uh, uh, shortlisted applicants. So don't uh, bother yourself and themselves. Yeah, guys, for we have only, come on, time is flying. We have yes, only, sorry. yeah, thank you, Min, uh, too. We have only four minutes, but we will try to expand it for 10 minutes. This meeting will be done. It will not be like yesterday, our friends we were talking about two hours. <laughs> uh, so for each of you, we will take one question and please direct your question for someone. And we as Chiviners will try to uh, make it faster. OK, so Adi Salam, your specific question. Go ahead. Only one question. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me, please? Yeah. Hello. Hello, Adi yes, Salam. Go ahead. So thank you. I already have uh, text in my put my question on the chat box, but I would like also repeat it. My question is for to Yedestes. What I would like to know is about the resources. I say, like, since we are from the same country. I would like to know if possible for her, what were the questions that you raised at the end of the conversation while we were given the chance? Thank you. Yeah, well, sorry. Uh, I remember asking two questions, honestly. I don't remember the second one. 
uh, one of the question I asked was because it was during the COVID time and everything, and they were talking about networking events and everything. So I asked them within my term time if the events were going to be held uh, in person or online, and they just replied saying we don't know and everything about that. And honestly, don't remember the second question I asked. Sorry. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, Adi Salam. Uh, Roland, Maddie, direct your question and please one question. Go ahead. Thank. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Roland. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I will let you, uh, Dia, choose the person to answer to my question, please. Okay. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one question, the, please. <laughs> okay, 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 no pain, no pain, thanks. Uh, so, so my only my question is, uh, if you have to start a position out of your country, are you still eligible to be a chief now? How you are supposed to go back in your country and uh, for two years at least, if I'm right? Thank you. Lilian? <laughs> as far as I'm aware, you're supposed to go back home um, for at least two years. So one thing that I know is that if there's something really exceptional, if you get the scholarship, you can contact your um, program officer and then they can have arrangements with regards to that if it's really something um, that um, uh, can be done, but you're supposed to go back home for at least two years. Yeah, and I think you don't have to mention this at this stage. Who knows, maybe things may change in next six months or next year. You have one year study, finish your study. You, you may have better plans, better positions, better promotions. OK, don't I think it's not a wise idea to mention if you're really eager to study in UK. After one year, you have uh, enough time to discuss this with, you, with your program officer. And yeah, thank you, Iman Nasser. Go ahead. One question, please. Possible to be two questions. I have listed four questions, but I'm going to only two of them. Both of them, it <laughs> makes me very because, nervous. Because you're from my, my country, I accept two questions. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, first one, I have graduated English uh, uh, language, English department, but my course, what I have chosen, it is uh, Media and Cultural Studies. So I'm afraid during the interview, if they ask me, uh, why you switch to media? Uh, so I don't know actually how to deal with this one. Even though I have 15 years uh, background working in media and cultural activities, but still, um, when I think about this, uh, I feel very nervous and I don't know how to answer this question. This is first. Secondly, uh, when I applied for Chivnin, actually um, by the... Um, uh, like it only a couple of days was remaining uh, when I applied. So finally I decided and only in two days I have written down all the essays. Uh, but after submission, I found out that I um, did some uh, mistakes during the essay. Like it's a contradictory. I put some contradictory information between my personal detail and uh, comparing to the essay. For example, uh, in my uh, in the leadership and influence, I mentioned that uh, when I was 15 years old, I started working on media. While uh, in the personal detail, I my first uh, the my the first TV channel that I have worked, uh, it is when I was only 12 years old. So I don't know where I got this 15 years old. Still, I cannot remember. But um, but I just like uh, when uh, finally I printed out my essays. Uh, I was finding that I put two contradictory information. One of them was this one, a second one. I put uh, the current, uh, my current job, uh, which is related to business part. Uh, in the personal detail, I put it 2018 to 2020. While in my essay, I'm, talk I'm mentioning that currently I'm working this and this. So I'm just wondering, uh, is this contradictory information between my personal detail and between the essay uh, is creating any problem for me? And thank you so much for your time that you have given to us. Thank you, thank you, Iman. Regarding the first question, I will introduce you someone who studied English language and he he, he got the scholarship in media and he's a Kurdish guy. He may help you. 
Uh, for the second question, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I think you're shortlisted. You're safe, so you may you may tell them that you have you have done some mistakes, some uh, funny mistakes. They may like it. They may be interested in it. I don't know. Don't take it so seriously. That that human, they can understand that uh, people make mistakes. You may just tell them that you're in rush. You couldn't. Uh, revise your 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 application and okay, yeah sorry shall i mention by myself that uh i have put this miss uh yes as that i did shall i mention by myself what do you think lilian what do you think guys <laughs> if it were up to me um i wouldn't mention if they ask me i would clarify just run because um you have gotten this far they were happy with your um essays it's now to show who you are. It's you who wrote the essay. Just nail the, the, the interview. Don't focus on what happened, what happened with the errors and all that. Just um, run through um, um, your new story. Don't focus on, oh, I did this. Yeah. Did. Just if they ask you, clarify. If they don't, run, uh, run through with your story. And with regards to um, your background, I had a very different background. Um, I never had a business um, um, a background in terms of education and I'm doing business and that's not an issue so long as um, you elaborate clearly in your career plan and link um, your choice of courses to what you intend to do after your um, studies. So it's not an issue at all. So you shouldn't be um, worried. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Giselle. Giselle, go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for your time. I would like to address this question to Lilian. And uh, can you further explain how you answer? Tell us about yourself. Uh, well, I uh, my bullet points are like academic, professional background, uh, some achievements, and maybe hobbies. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Um, just structure your question first because you're going to be asked that question. So structure it like um, yes, this. Yeah, this they said you don't have to memorize structure it um if you're going to start with yourself with your um education professional background and your achievement something that will really make you stand out you, because um you have so many things um i'm gonna give you a very um practical example i saw this um youtube video while i was preparing myself and this lady said um, she didn't know what to say about you know with regards to that question and she went to the beach she just sat down and she started thinking about her entire life what she did she started writing what she did since she was young you know then she started you know picking the things that um were really um going to make her stand out so just have like a structure then um practice around that and you can also check me i can give you more tips yeah okay thanks thank you uh mahnoor mahnoor khan go ahead Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you so much for all your invaluable help and time. Um, so basically, my question is about reference letters when applying to universities in UK. Um, basically, my background in education is not related to what I want to do in the UK for my uh, graduate. Um, so I wanted to ask, should I give an academic reference? and a professional reference or should I give both professional references because my professional work is related to what I want to do. So just for context, my uh, undergrad degree was in business while I want to specialize in special education and I've been working in this field like professionally, but I don't have a degree. So would you recommend giving one academic reference and one professional or both professional because they're more linked? Thank you so much. Um, and my question is uh, directed to you, Dior. OK. Uh, I don't know if, if the university requires you experience. If I think it's a good idea to because usually they ask two or three references, mostly two. If they ask you uh, professional experience, I think it's a good idea to submit your academic and professional uh, reference. But if it's if it doesn't focus on experience and having experience in that uh, field. 
maybe two academics are okay. For me, I, I really, even for Chevening and for universities, I applied, I submitted two uh, dif uh, different uh, references, one academic, one professional. I think it's, it's good because it, it covers you from academic aspects and also professional aspects. Thank you, Maria, go ahead. Hello, hello. Uh, my oh. question is for DR. Uh, I would like to know how do you meet all the other um, participants in this meter, meeting? Um, all, the, all, all the other alumni, Chivni and alumni. And if there's any uh, event uh, for the Chivni alumni, when did you get to the UK? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, First, we have uh, our class group. So when you when you get the scholarship, at uh, the first month you're gonna receive a Facebook link. Uh, you you have a private class. All tuners are in one group. The group is deactive actually. I think when we post something, we post our activities. Mostly 20, 30 people like it because everyone is busy with their exploring and activities and studying and so on. And uh, we have uh, some. Activities uh, uh, that second month, I think uh, there's a competition like uh, two colors teams. For this year, they were blue team and a red team. There are uh, about uh, I think 70 or 80 universities in UK, maybe. So uh, the Chevening has divided uh, uh, groups for two colors. For instance, I was a red team. Me and Lillian, we were uh, we were blue team. And we got the, the competition. We were very uh, discovered and we were traveling everywhere. They, they put some uh, books and some spots in some strange places. So we were trying to find this uh, stuff and take picture uh, as team with the, a blue color and we would share it on social media. So uh, we, we received points, OK? Uh, I'm sorry, Adidas and Mopopo, if you are red team, we beat you. We are really sorry for, for that one. Yeah, it was like that. It's, it's our fault. It's fine. I'm on red team and I'm... Yeah, <laughs> we don't travel. It's just... Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, even some of the blue team, they, they try to... We had spies in red team uh, groups. So uh, we could get their, their, their locations. And so, yeah, we were active team. Thank you. Milani, your question. <laughs> okay, thanks, can you hear me? Yes, Milani, go ahead. Okay, so I have a problem with one question that I read. It, it was about why do you prefer to go to UK instead to go to the US? And the problem for me is that in the part of the application that you wrote, if you apply to other scholarship, I put Fulbright, which is for US. So I don't know how to face this question. I mean, UK is a really good, um, has a really good universities, however, also US. So, but I don't know how to reply to this. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend. I had a very quick answer. I had a friend, he was, studying uh, Felta, it's not Fulbright, it's a part of Fulbright. He was studying in, uh, uh, he was working in UK as a, a scholarship. Uh, he had his interview online with uh, our Kurdistan court and he got a scholarship. He's studying in UCL. And even we were discussing this, we are some, we are friends. Uh, he, he said, uh, they asked me this question, uh, have you applied for any other scholarship? And he told them, yes, I've applied for uh, this scholarship and I'm confident that I will get it. They, they've already offered me the master's degree, but I prefer UK because I think UCL is better and it's the, the first ranking in educational leadership and so on. Yeah, it's quite normal to to mention this if you have if you have done this, if you have applied, it's quite normal to mention. Why not? It shows that you're confident, uh, you're eager, you are you are your passion, you want to study, you are interested, you, you are not, you're not easy. Yeah, why not? If if you have applied, yes, mention it. 
Thank you, Ferdinand. Go ahead, guys. Uh, we will not take more questions, I think. Ferdinand, go ahead. Actually, um, I wanted to ask a silly question. For example, I have online interview and uh, I have online interview. Okay. Okay. So I'm confused about my attire. What type of dress should I wear? Because I'll be in my home. Yeah. In the interview. I think you remember the, the first day, Ricardo, he was, <laughs> he was terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think a normal, maybe a jacket, maybe a, a no, not suit because suit is very formal for online uh, meeting. But yeah, maybe a shirt, normal like me, like right now, like Lily and everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ferdinand, for your question. Cheyenne, go ahead. Share this name. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I had a question about regarding the fees. Uh, the course that I have chosen is a 26,000 pounds. And as far as I know, that Chevening only offers 22,000 pounds. So how What's am I going course? to fill that gap? What's Sorry? Is it MBA? My course is... No, no, no. It's uh, okay. Renewable Energy and Architecture. You're fine. You're fine. No worries. This, uh, this uh, condition is only for MBA, okay? Uh, oh, okay. it's only for Thank MBA you. for medical for medical courses. Some of them are more than fifty thousand uh, okay. pounds. So Thank you. yeah, you're safe. Thank you. Good luck for uh, everyone. Dominic, you're welcome, Sharon. Uh, Lamin, I think Lamin. Lamin, is it second time? If it's second time, you may help us. Uh, okay, thank you so very much, dear, for giving me the opportunity to ask yet another question. Uh, like previously, my this question is going to be directed to Ntombi Mapapu because we we see a similar interest. <laughs> she is currently at the University of Reading, and this is the university I actually want to be by next year this time. Mapapu, can you hear me? I'm listening. Uh, I wanted to know the three British culture that you admire and also what three British culture that surprise you while at the University of Reading. Basically, the cultures you admire and the cultural socks that you had. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think that <laughs> I think that's also a personal question that you can research and respond to. Um, I can give you my responses, but you'll have to research and you know align yourself with that. Um, yeah, I think um, what I admire is perhaps the architecture, although there's some architecture which is similar to um, South Africa because we were colonized by the British. Um, I think, uh, I can't remember what else actually, um, but I admire the architecture, I admire the, the landscape of the country, um, it's quite different, um, as well as perhaps the, the politeness of the people around here. Um, the culture shocks were it's just, it's very different from South Africa. People aren't very friendly, they keep to themselves. Um, uh, also the food, the food. The food is terrible. I, I don't want to lie. The food is terrible, uh, uh, it's especially the meat. Um, and perhaps the shock is also the weather. The weather, it's quite cold here. It's supposed to be spring now, but it's you, it's, you're experiencing <laughs> negative one and negative two. So, yeah, those were the shocks. And yeah, the yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you need more information, I can, um, Dia can give you my email address or my number. What's happening? Sure. Thank sorry. you. Uh, sorry, dear. That will be good. Yeah, this, yeah, this go ahead. I'm sorry. I have to go. It was nice meeting you all. And good luck. Okay. I good wish luck. you the best. We were only, thank you. We were only taking, I don't know, we really should leave it, but no, Rua, no questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tinik, too. Go ahead. And Adama, we will just. Uh, accept two questions 
and we will leave it. Uh, yeah, this is you can leave. Have a good night for you. Yeah. Bye, yeah, just this. Hoping to see you next month. Tinik, uh, Tinik too, I think. Hello. Hello, go ahead, friend. Hello. Two questions, please. Yes, we can My first you. question will be directed to Lillian. And the second question will be directed to Zia. My first question is, Lillian, um, is the shepherding help to connect like, because for our short-term goals, we need like organizations that share our vision for our country. So shepherding help us to connect with those organizations to come back to our country and have impact. The second question is to Zia, do you or uh, have you met any shepherds who have been able, because it's like you're good with networking, who have been able to get those opportunities and who have been able to get like financing for those projects back? Yes. Um, hello? Hello, Lillian. Go ahead. We did... Okay, if I got the question correctly, he wants to know if Chevening um, helps um, helps us to connect with organizations that can support um, our activities. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um, um, first of all, being a Chevener coming to the UK, um, it's an opportunity by itself because you're not um, you won't get a manual as to do this or do what okay so when you get to the university um what i saw that is different from the universities back at home or in my country is that there's so many opportunities um in the university that you're going to um attend to like my papa said um um companies attend, um, you have guest um, speakers coming to your lectures, you have um, sessions, so you can take um, advantage of such uh, sessions. And I think um, Chevening also organizes some um, events. Uh, and I think unfortunately for us, due to COVID, we couldn't uh, meet as, um, as um, I think uh, the previous cohorts did. But definitely you have opportunities to meet um, with different organizations, but then you can also take your own initiative and, you know, um, find the organizations that you really want to interact with. So, yeah. OK, thank you. Well, I guess that answers my question. Uh, no we need to answer. Don't need for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Adama, Adamo, the last question. Today. Hello. Hey Adam, go ahead. I hope you can hear me. Oh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Good evening, Adam. Are you okay? Thank you. My question is this: uh, When you are asked about what are your weaknesses, how do you address that that question, please? That's my question. Thank you. Uh. I think it's a not wise idea to to mention your weakness. You may, you may. There, there's a trick, and it's an old trick, but however, it may work because nowadays they don't ask these questions. They rarely ask these questions. Uh, but if they ask you, you may say something. Maybe you had a problem in time management, or I don't know, maybe sleeping, or maybe a habit. Okay, but then you you overcome your your problem with a course, or maybe. Uh, you, you you thought that this is not good, this is not helping you. These questions are good for job interviews, for these types of uh, uh -huh. interviews. I think you will not face it. Even if you face it, it's not a wise idea to, to mention a, a weakness. If, even if you mentioned, you have to uh, support your weakness that you have uh, fixed, you have fixed the problem because weakness is not okay. a problem. Thank you I guys. Understand. It was lovely to be Thank with you. you. You're welcome. It was lovely to be with you. Uh, we really thank Lilian and Mapapo and Yadizas and you guys uh, from all the world, from different countries, different backgrounds, different names, different nations, beliefs, colors. This is amazing. 
we hope we will meet you next week and some of you already take your your interviews we wish you best luck and uh, if our friends have any other comments uh, uh, otherwise we yes Lydia. guys um all the best um the fact that you've made it to the interview stage it means they were really happy with your um essays so it's just uh, it's just up to you just go and nail it be prepared um, I would say you're very lucky to have um, such mentorships. I didn't have it um, back then when I was applying. So you guys um, leverage this opportunity. If you can attend all mentorship sessions, do practice, practice, and you'll just nail it. So all the best. And I'm looking forward to get good news from you next, uh, is it this year, <laughs> at the end of the year, <laughs> when you come to the UK. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Yes, congratulations to everyone thus far. Um, you have done a great and stellar job. Um, continue, guys. Be confident. Um, be confident. Focus when you're in the interview. Um, be confident. This. Be confident. Be yourselves. You've done it thus far. It means that you are going to go for it. Just focus, guys. Don't think about anything else. Don't stress. Don't worry about it. Just focus on your essay questions and then do your best. Um, yeah, thank you. Let's, I think, I just wanted to say thank you to Dia and also to Lillian for um, um, for taking time out. I think Dia, thank you. This is a great initiative. Like Lillian said, we didn't have such a support um, system, but Dia came through and asked us if we, can, if we don't want to help those that are about to go into their interviews. And we put our hands up and we're here um thanks guys uh yeah I'll, I'll i'll put my handles also in the the chat so if anyone wants to um get any further help but thanks dear thanks lydian for your time as well thank you guys thank, thank you everyone have a good night good sleep wait let me put my handles <laughs> yeah. let me put my handles for twitter yeah. and for okay, instagram yeah, okay 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 <laughs> there we go guys all of the best Thanks, yeah. Bye. Okay, bye bye, guys. Bye bye, thank Jana. you. Bye bye, Iman. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Iman. Have a great time. Thanks, thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Lamin, Adamo, Ferdin from Bangladesh. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Afaf, Arabic name. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fit soon, I think. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, really. You are impressive. Yeah.